Hi, I'm Lois Old Shaw. Today's December 3rd, 2018. And I know I said I was coming back to do the video on um, all the different subjects of the things that are out there that I believe are not biblical. But I got up this morning and I've been, I've been in a lot of prayer last night and this morning. And my husband Gary and I started talking about something that's out there right now. Um, which is the uh, the rabbis are inviting 70 nations to um, come there in Israel to um, a dedication of what they're they're preparing for the building of the temple and the sacrifices that they're looking to do because obviously they don't believe the Messiah has come already and that he was the final sacrifice um, so they're looking to start that up again, which is a major, major um, time zone um, information for us and how close we are, that we are in the tribulation because the temple is going to start getting built soon. We're going to be hearing about it. I've been feeling it for a while now. It's going to, we're going to be getting notification that they're going to be building the temple. They actually have everything so set to go that at a moment's notice they can just start doing what they have to do. So that's going to start happening. And that started my husband and I talking about the Antichrist and um, why, we, why is he going to look to stand in the temple, the abomination of desolation that the Bible talks about. And um, we started talking about the Antichrist and the fact that he wants to be God. He's always wanted to be God. Um, he There was war in heaven. And... Um, Michael threw him down. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to actually read you the scripture in Revelation where it says it. Um, because anything that we do basically has to be biblically based. Otherwise, it's just our own imaginations. So let me just read it. Um, in Revelation 12, if you want to check it out, verse 7. It says, And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And the angels were cast out with him. All right? That's what happened with Satan. The fallen angels, they're the fallen angels. They're here. They were cast down here. Michael cast them out. They didn't win the battle. They were sent down here. And what the Holy Spirit is revealing, and Brother Steve Quayle, again, has been getting this for quite some time now. Um, we're entering the age of the robots, and I'm going to show you exactly what the devil's looking to do and what he's been trying to do from the get-go, from the beginning. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, right? And we know that the devil came in. We know that he tempted her. She ate of the tree um, of, the, of, the, of the knowledge of good and evil. And it was something they weren't supposed to do. Once they did that, if they were to have gone and ate of the other tree, okay, they would have lived in that state forever. And God had to send them out of the Garden of Eden, and he did it out of mercy. But from the get-go, the devil saw, now listen to this, because this is exactly what's going on on planet Earth. The devil saw that man was created in the image and likeness of God. He saw it was a perfect fit for him to recreate himself and his angels that was sent down from heaven were hurled out of heaven and create his own being. This was his plan from the beginning, and he's been doing it since the get-go. He figured if he got Adam and Eve and they fell, all right, and left that state that they were in, that spiritual state that they were in, and the knowledge of evil came into the picture, which is what, where it comes from him, that he could manipulate man. And what has he been doing? He's been, in, been manipulating man ever since then. So he took them out, he manipulated them, then he, he uh, came at Cain, and made Cain kill his brother Abel, and the story goes on and on and on, alright? Now I'm going to read you something in Genesis 6. 
Because this tells it all too, all right? And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them. The sons of God, that's the angels that were cast down, that's the fallen angels, that some say are not here. They're here, folks, and they've been here. They've been here since they were cast out of heaven down to the earth, the Bible says. This is where they have been, and this is where they are. So the sons of God saw the daughters of men, all right, the daughters of men, okay? They're angels. These are daughters of men. It, it explains it explicitly. There's no denying that this is the word of God. It's in Genesis 6. This is the truth. This is what happened back then. All right, so he saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. They picked wives. Now, if you read in the book of Enoch, all right, it explains the whole thing, how 200 of these angels made a pact together. The devil told them to go reproduce with the women and create angelic human beings. And they were afraid because they knew that God was going to be really angry about it. And they were very nervous about doing the deal. So 200 of them got together. It tells their names and everything. And they made a pact together to do this deed. That they knew they, they were following the devil. They were worshipping him at that point in time. They followed his lead. And the 200 of them did that, that very thing. They took the daughters of men and they had sex with the women. And this is what it says they did. They saw that they were fair, and they took them to be wives. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. All right? He made it 120 years because they lived like 900, 800, 700 years. And God changed it because he saw that the flesh of man was going to be, be um, motivated by Satan in many ways and that we were in serious trouble because of it. That we, we had a problem just listening to the Spirit once, once that tie with God was severed and it was such a horrendous thing in the sight of God and such a, such a very sad and, and upsetting day in the heavenlies, in heaven with God, that day when man fell, okay? But once he fell... God knew that his flesh was going to have a problem with Satan. And that's exactly what's been happening all along. So he gave us only 120 years so that we would be able to die and then go and be with him and be set free from the state of evil that we have to deal with, basically. And, and there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bear themselves... Children, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man, that it was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Evil continually. Satan was doing his thing. He was controlling mankind. So that he could create his own being and become his own God. It was working for him. He created the Nephilim, the giants. It says they were giants in the land. Men of renown. These, these were men that had mighty abilities and mighty powers because they were half human and half angel. This is what happened. So we know the whole story. God saw it and he, he, he decided he was going to flood the earth and get rid of them. But when he flooded the earth, obviously some of them survived somehow, some way. We don't know the whole story, whether they, they climbed mountains or whether they went bare deep in the ground. We don't really know. But we know after that flood happened that there were giants in the land. Okay? Because in Gideon and all these things, when the, with these battles that were out along the thing, they, they, they scoped out the lands and they said there were giants and they were afraid. And they panicked over things. Joshua, giants in the land, giants in the land. And, and they, they got nervous about it. Even though God told them to go do certain things. They were fearful of these giants. So these giants still exist. <laughs> they're still out there somewhere. They're buried in the, they're, they're deep in the ground, I believe. They have caves in the, underneath the ground and stuff. They're going to surface at some point. 
Our brother Steve Quayle, let me tell you something. A lot of people come against that man, all right? And I don't hardly know the man, all right? I've been to his conference and I met him personally. Um, but the point is, I don't really know him on a personal level. But I am telling you something. I have been getting revelation just like God has been showing him. And that's why he's put me on his website, because the Lord has spoken to me several times and given me revelation, and my husband too. I get woken up out of my sleep. This morning I got blown out of my bed again with this revelation of what the devil's doing, what he's been doing since the get-go. All right? Then it excelled, okay, after that point. The flood happened, and then mankind started going down the tubes again. Now we're at the point where it says, just like in the days of Noah, which shall it be when Jesus is going to come back again? But to go back a little bit, in America, there was a woman, Margaret Sanger, okay, who started this eugenics thing, where she was determining, and these are the words, if you look her up on the internet, she wanted to get rid of what they felt were feeble-minded idiots and morons. And they were trying to breed a race of people that were, you know, superior. So the devil tried back then, failed, God stopped it. And not only did he fail, he, he actually blew it. Because when he created the being with, with the angels and humans, the Nephilim, the giants, became reprobate. So reprobate that they started eating all mankind. They started eating each other. They were killing each other. They were having all kinds of sexual perversions. Um, there was all kinds of sick stuff going on. So it kind of was backfiring in the devil's face. So what he tried to do after that was he tried to take man and make some kind of a superhuman race that he could control. You see, his, his goal is to control us. And this is what we have to get. And these are warnings that God is putting out to make us get this. The devil's goal since the beginning has been to control man. Because he can't do anything in the earth without a body. He's a spirit. The angels are spirits. The Nephilim are spirits. They can do nothing without having a human body, some kind of a body that can function in this realm. And that is why that's been his target, to create these superhuman beings. So Margaret did that back in the day, and then Hitler did it, and I'm sure there's many others. Hitler came on the scene, and what is the story about Hitler? He wanted first to wipe out the Jewish people, because to him, that was God's chosen. Get rid of them. He didn't want none of them around, just like the devil wants no Christians around. That's his, that's his goal right now, is to kill the Christians, the Jews, anybody else that comes in his way. Anybody that's against Allah, all right, the Antichrist, has to be removed from planet Earth. That's what he's in the process of doing now. Martyrs are being killed left and right over there, Christians. Heads are being beheaded. This is already happening. We are in this point in time. It's happening now. So what Hitler did was he tried to get rid of all the Jews, and then he was going to bring together superhumans and create a race of what they called superhumans. But again, the devil tried to use Hitler, and it got stopped. It didn't succeed. It got stopped, even though... Many of our Jewish brothers and sisters were killed. Now, we're in today. All right, time moves on. Here we are in today, just like in the days of Noah. The devil, once again, is looking to recreate. But he's got a better plan this time. And this is, blows your mind. And this is what Brother Steve has been saying for some time now. They're out there we're about talking about the AIs, the robots, and all this stuff that's out there. And Gary and I this morning, we were blown off, we were blown out of the bed because we started seeing all these things about, about Satan's plan here. What the Antichrist wants to do, and think about this, just think about this. This is so truth. He's not looking to take over a human, although he is. The Antichrist is going to be human that he takes over. We believe we already know who it is. All right? I've said it before. I'm not going to get into it right now. But if you biblically study things out, he has to come from the Ottoman Empire, all right, which is Turkey. So we believe things are going down over there right now. And things are happening. The person is making a covenant with many. There's a lot of things going on. But this is Satan's goal. Take over people 
which he's doing. The Nephilim are taking over people. Uh, the, the angels are taking over people. People are being taken over and being used by the devil. I mean, it's obvious. We know it. We're not ignorant to it. It's quite obvious what we see, the hatred, the anger, and the evil that's out there. I think nobody is going to disbelieve in the fact that there's evil, good and evil. We see it all the time. He's going to take over a robot. That's his ultimate goal. They have Sophia now out there. He's, his goal is to take over an AI, a robot, so that he doesn't have to worry about the flesh getting in his way. The flesh dies. The flesh is corruptible. The flesh can't do things that a robot, an AI, can. Computers are way more smarter than we are in the memory and what the abilities they're able to do. And that's what's being created now. Do you know in Saudi Arabia they have this whole town that they're building where all these AIs are going to be living? The Sophias of today? It's, it's, it's all being lined up. The AIs, the robots, are going to look to take over the planet because they're going to be controlled by Satan and the demons. Mankind is in the way. We are in his way. He wants control of the earth. He tried to take control of heaven, and God hurled him down. Michael hurled him down. He couldn't do it. Now he's going to try to take over the earth. He's trying. He's moving in. He's been moving in since the get-go. He tried with Hitler. He tried with all these different people. He's trying again. He's moving in for the kill. When the Antichrist rises up, okay, He's going to destroy Christians. He's going to destroy the Jews once again. And all the evil people that are on his side, he's going to leave them around for a while. This is what he figures for a while until they can transport the soul of the people into the robots. That's their ultimate goal. Is to have the soul of humans or the demonic entities put into robots. Therefore, there'll be nothing in the way of, you know, the strength and the power that they'll be able to control the earth with. See, he failed recreating with human beings created in the image and likeness of God. He thought it was a great plan because after all, created in the image and likeness of God, we are. So he was going to couple that with his ability, his angelic ability, with us in God's image and likeness. How could you lose, he thought. This is the greatest plan he ever had. It flopped in his face. Because the problem is reprobate, 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 reprobate insanity. Insanity, insanity. You can't reason with insanity. You can't reason with reprobates. And that's where it backfires. Because there's no faithfulness with thieves, the Bible says. Not the Bible, but uh, the saying that's out there. You can't trust another thief. You can't trust a liar. So when you're amongst all liars, and you're amongst all thieves, and you're amongst all reprobates, who are you going to trust? You can't trust anybody. If you know you're in a room with liars, tell me, are you going to believe anything they say? How can you believe anything they say? You can't. So this is the problem with the devil trying to recreate his own person. Because every they're all reprobate. And you can't trust anybody because somebody's always going to look to take over. It's like, you know, the gangs that you have out there. The gangs in the streets. You know, the mafia. There's always somebody coming up the line that wants to be top dog. And they'll kill to do it. My gosh, the popes. The Catholic Church, over the years, they murdered them so that they could become the popes. I mean, there's so much corruption that's been out there over the generations just to be top dog. People will do anything to be something in this world. And that's what the devil wants to be. He wants to be something. And that something that he wants to be is God. He will never be God. And he will never be something. 
He will always be the fallen angel that was hurled out of heaven with one third of the angels that followed him. And they will never ever succeed at anything that they try to do. Because God is the creator of everything. The angels and mankind. And he's going to take care of the problem. He's going to come back. The Lord's going to come back and fix the mess that Satan is trying to create once again. These robots have no souls. We have souls that can be influenced by God. A robot does not. So whatever is programmed into it, that's what it will do. If it's programmed to kill, it will do it, and it won't feel bad about it. Because it doesn't have a soul. It doesn't connect to God to have any kind of compassion or mercy. They say what they're programmed to say. Like when they, they, when they have conversations with Sophia, all right? Oh, you know, they're afraid of her, basically. You know, because, oh, she could take over. She could do this and she could do that. You know, and she says what she's programmed to say, you know. Well, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. Or I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. But if they were, she was programmed to do it, she'd cut your head right off in a moment of time. You can't trust a robot, folks. You can't trust anything. You can't even trust your computer. How many times does it fail on you? How many times all of a sudden this weird stuff comes up on you? It's like, what is that? We can't trust these things. There's only one thing we can trust. The Bible. The, our Father God, our Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, and... The true brothers and sisters in Jesus that truly love one another and, and who are listening to the leading of the Holy Spirit. God is showing us point blank what the devil's plan is here. And what are we going to do about it? We have to start praying against it and, and know that God is going to come and fix this problem. But before he comes, how far along are we going to get? This whole community is being built. And, not a, and, and on top of it, this community being built in Saudi Arabia, they're building the highest building in the world. The Tower of Babel is going up again. They're building another Tower of Babel. Gee, I wonder if that's a coincidence. I don't think so. God stopped it the first time and he's going to stop it the second time. Because they want to rise up above God. And everything that they do, that's the goal. Is to become our own gods. That's the goal. That's Satan's goal. That's man's goal. We've all strayed from the true goal. Which is to be the children of our almighty father. <laughs> Just to be his children. That's who we were created to be. He created us so that he could have more in his army. We're part of his army to defeat the devil. And it's going to happen. This is so, so mind-blowing. And this is the devil's plan. He's going to take over a robot. That's his goal eventually. Down the line, down the line. But for now, he's using man. And who knows how soon he's going to go into a, a robot. We don't even know. The demons are probably already controlling some of them. CERN. CERN is looking to reach into the spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is here already. Everything that man is trying to do, he's trying to reach into, into an area where he shouldn't be touching it. You don't want to go into the demonic realm. You don't want any part of the demonic area. You want to walk in the kingdom of God, not in the kingdom of the devil. Because that's only hatred, destruction, and death. Jesus came to give us life. And to give us that life more abundantly. And that's where we need to be. I put it out. I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. Satan needs a body to operate in the earth. And that's what he's been trying to create. It's been his plan from the beginning. To make his own being. He used man because man was made and created in the image and likeness of God. And he thought it was a good plan. It backfired. All right. Then Hitler tried to create a, a, a super race, all right? It, it, it's just been out there for generations and generations and generations. And now we're in the last generation. The millennials are going to be part of 
the millennium. That's the generation that's not going to pass before Jesus returns. So our redemption does draw nigh. But this is a message that needs to get out because this is the truth. And I've been getting blown away by these things in my spirit. And, I, and God is just moving me. I have, to, I have to say it. I have to tell it. I have to, just like Brother Steve Quayle has to get out there and he's got to say it. Oh, he's a gloomer doomer, always is, always is. No, he's not. He's telling you the truth. Because if you're not aware of this and you're not prepared for this, it's going to knock you off your feet. If you don't know that the Nephilim and all these angelic demonic beings are floating around seeking whom they may devour, what is your defense against it? If you don't know that you've been given the name of Jesus to cast out demons, what defense do you have? We have to use the weapons of our warfare. God gave us the power to cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Therefore, we have to walk in that. And we have to know that to be truth. So if you don't know anything about demons and what the devil's plan is to do, you're, you're defenseless. The truth is what sets us free. The truth is what sets us free. And the Holy Spirit is the one that's come to lead us to all truth. So I'm Lois Vogel Sharp, and I'll be back again, and I will get that video out. It's just that I got blown out of bed this morning with this one, and I have to put it out because when I get zapped like this, it's like, wow, this is like amazing stuff. It's scary in its own way, but we know that this is what's going down. And let me tell you something. When America goes into this economic crash and this, this depression happens and the whole earth deals with this, when this, when this third seal opens, all right, it's in the process of going to happen any moment, the world is going to change forever. Forever. God was showing me this morning. It's going to be a forever change because this is, this is going to set things off. And we are in the tribulation. This is all part of the tribulation. The first and second seal are already opened. And one has to do with the false prophet. All right? These are things that are, these are things that are, it's already out there. They're already happening. This third seal is the tipping of the weights, which happens when things crash. And Venezuela is already dealing with this. The third seal basically has already been opened for them. But this third seal is not just for their country. It's for the world's going to feel this. The whole world's going to get hit with this. And a lot of it's because of the, it's the sins of the world. It's all that the judgment coming down. And God has to get rid of evil. He's got to deal with evil. He's got to make his people repent. He's got to show America that we can't be aborting babies. We can't be doing these things. There are abominations in his sight. And he's going to bring America to her knees. There's a video out, and I have to throw this out, it just came to me, of President Trump. And I sent it out on my Facebook. Of all those that are coming against President Trump, you need to watch this video of him at the White House bringing up a brother who was in jail, who he taught, tells the whole story, how he got saved, how Jesus came into his life, and the guy that sent him to prison, became they became best friends, and how... President Trump says, we're open. We can talk about God. We can talk about Christmas and these things. We can, say, we can say these things now. We're free to do this. We weren't free to do this years ago. But we are since he became president. And we better vote that man in again and stop listening to the lies that are out there. That he's the Trojan horse. He's bringing America down. No, he's bringing America back to God. That's what this man is doing. And I'm not saying he's the perfect person. But God is using him. He put him in the office. And God is going to use him. Go find it on the internet. Ned. It's on Facebook. Go look for it. It's out there of him talking. It's absolutely makes you want to cry. Because you can see what God is doing. So stop talking against the man. And saying lies to the American people. Who need to know that God put him in the office. For the greater purpose of not allowing Satan to take over America. There will be countries that stand up for Jesus in the end times. The devil's not taking over all of mankind, just like the Holy Spirit isn't taking over all of mankind. Some are going to follow Satan, and some are going to follow the Holy Spirit God. It's a mix. Growing up the wheat and the tares together. So not every country is going to fall into the hands of the Antichrist. 
You got to read your scriptures and know what they what it's talking about. So I'm Lois Vogel Sharp, and I'll be back when he sends me back again. Have a blessed day.